Aloha and welcome. I'm Peter Rossig. I'm your host here on the Two Wheel Revolution on Think Tech Hawaii, uh, a show where we talk about um, what's called micro mobility or personal mobility, that is, bicycles, electric bicycles, e scooters, e skateboards. Uh, eventually, we'll get to e wheelchairs when I'm ready. And uh, But we also talk about the original kind of personal mobility, which is walking and uh, and pedestrians in, in Honolulu. And I'm very lucky today to have as my guest, Marcel Honoré. He is the uh, trans mainly the transportation writer for Civil Beat. Uh, before that, he was the, the star advertiser. Uh, so he's been covering everything uh, related to transportation for some time. Marcel, thank you. Welcome to our show. Aloha. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, we'll jump right in. You've covered transportation for both of our, uh, for our leading newspaper, our leading online uh, news service, and uh, you, everything. You've obviously covered rail a lot, uh, like it or not. <laughs> and uh, But uh, tell me where you think we are overall in our transportation picture here in Honolulu. Oh, man. Like, just like with, with rail and with everything, I think there's there's enormous potential. You you see it, uh, but it always just seems to be like right over the horizon, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like we just had rail open up, and I think people are are seeing the, the system, but you know, it's still not quite what it needs to be. Getting into yeah. town, they just see the potential for it, and I think there's uh, there's some parallels there, even when when we're talking about micro mobility and some of the other options. Mm -hmm. Where, when you say potential, uh, what do you mean by that? I, yeah, it's, it's, uh, to elaborate a little more, you know, I think sometimes you go, I think of a, a trip I took a few years ago. I was on the continent. I was in New York. You know, you see e-bikes uh, just everywhere. You know, it's it's they are there. They have a, they have established themselves um, as uh, and so in places like that, and obviously, you know, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, these are going to be the, the big precursors uh, to what's coming and, and eventually makes it to uh, to other cities transportation wise. Uh, but, I, you know, you're starting to see, uh, you know, more e-bikes and scooters and, you know, personal micro mobility um, around town. This is just kind of my general observation. Um, but. I think in terms of uh, really setting up uh, more infrastructure and not even just in urban Honolulu, but, you know, uh, points farther, farther Eva, farther West, and Leeward, um, it, you know, um, it, you're, you're seeing that there's an interest here, right? And in fact, in in 2019, I was looking it up ahead of this, uh, INRIX, which is the, the big, um, you know, transportation research firm ranked Hawaii, I think, no, ranked Honolulu, uh, the, the top city in uh, in the United States uh, the, with the market for the most potential for micro mobility. Wow. Um, I think also about in 2018 when, you know, Lime, and we can get into this more, but, uh, you know, back then Lime was kind of a different, more uh, disruptive, let's say, company, and they parachuted in here for a few days. Uh, it was a whole <laughs> to do. Uh, the, the scooters were gone and impounded by the city within, I think, about four days. But they called it the most impressive launch, uh, despite all of the problems with that launch. They called it, at the time, the most impressive launch they had seen to date out, out of, like, 60 markets. So that's all to say there is enormous potential, and there has been potential here for years, and you're starting to see it. Uh, but I, I just think, you know, given the landscape here, literally and figuratively, uh, it could be a lot more. Yeah, well, we have a long history of skateboarding uh, coming out of surfing, I guess, and, and uh, it's had its, uh, it's been a mixed bag. You, you know, we don't hear too much about it now, but it used to drive the motors crazy and uh, mostly kids not necessarily being the most responsible riders. And there was a lot of controversy around that. But I don't think most people know, Biki, our, our bike share system is among the top five or six in the nation in terms of yeah. ridership. And uh, when the Japanese visitors come back, I think they'll they'll reclaim that. So yeah. you're a cyclist, bicyclist yourself, I understand. And uh, right. uh, you, what do you ride? Traditional bike, uh, bicycle, electric bike? Yeah, it's or? it's a hybrid. I, I'm still. I haven't made the the leap. Uh, largely, it's you know that I'm interested in e-bikes, but they're a little pricey. Uh, but I'll still use my uh, giant. That's a hybrid escape. 
Uh, I'm probably due for a new bike, but but my my hybrid is is still uh, treating me well, and that's what I'll use uh, wherever and and whenever I can. Uh, I still do own a car, um, you know, but it, I, I use that for you know for long distance trips and the like and, and sure. big store runs, but Absolutely. but where I can and and I, I really do try uh, to to bike first and foremost. Yeah. And, you know, there are, I've interviewed on this uh, program, uh, people from eBikes Hawaii, from other uh, bicycle shops new out there mm -hmm. on uh, Wileye, uh, yep. near, near where you, you go to work. If, it's if it's right over work. my shoulder, actually. Yeah. 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 Uh, they have a very, you know, they're very impressive. They have a range from scooters to, uh, to what I call uh, mopeds and uh, electric bikes and uh, they've got a very good reputation, so we have a lot of choices. I think when you're ready to, but it, it is a it is a pretty penny, no no question about that. Yeah, so. yeah, right, right. Overall, in the time you've been covering this subject, would you say we've gotten a little safer here in Honolulu, a little less safe? Obviously, the more people that are out there, percentage wise, you're going to have a certain more, number more accidents. But then you have to look at it realistically in terms of how many people are riding, just as a anecdotally or yeah from my personal observations i i you know and i'm thinking i i primarily access the the king street cycle lane uh and the protected lane there and i think we're doing better i've never gotten the impression i mean i'm sure they're out there but i i was never worried about you know when 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 i'm worried about my personal safety it's not drivers that really want to actually threaten me and do harm but it's just getting uh you know uh drivers more uh, uh accustomed uh they're they're just not looking out for and they're just not attuned and they're not used to they weren't used to at least uh you know looking out and sharing that area uh with with cyclists and and bike commuters and the like uh, i think that has gotten generally better um I think you know the the city has has created uh, you know some good spurs with uh, you know Pensacola is in there now and, and Ward, um, in addition to you know South and and Macaulay. Um, I think some of the you know early controversy about that you know the growing pain has more or less dissipated. People have kind of come to accept this, um, and that's that's good for town. Um, and, but again, I think we always have to have um, an eye towards, uh, you know, connecting, uh, I think, and or at least providing that, uh, you know, in, in other uh, communities around Oahu. I mean, micromobility, I, I, I think it's usually we're talking about these small trips, one to three miles. And that's where those yeah. they can really do the, the best good. It's not not necessarily doing a you know island you know going across 20 miles across the, the south shore i mean it helps to have that all in place where you can you know you have the connectivity to do what, what you need to do um but I, I think you know you look at what's available in town and for obvious reasons this is this is the densest most populous area uh but i i do think you know we need to get safer uh infrastructure that makes it more accessible uh, for you know for more people besides just more able-bodied people right uh, than, uh, in in other other places so anyways yeah oh good good point and I think again people uh, on either side of, of the issue forget it took uh, Amsterdam and Copenhagen and cities like that that are famous for their bicycling bicycle being bicycle friendly it took them 40 50 years to get to where they are today and they mm -hmm. didn't uh, you know they they looked at their city and said we can't continue to add cars uh now in amsterdam there are many many more bikes than there are people mm -hmm. uh so uh but it, it takes a long time and i think i hope you're right that people are getting used to uh the bike lane uh that yeah. they have to cross sometimes if they want to do a left turn off king street Right. Not exactly related, but just because I'm interested. What do you think to the, the speed bumps that have been going in uh, a lot? Is that, uh, you know, I, I personally, every time I go over them, I say, damn it. And then I say, well, 
you know, good thing, but I'm I'm not thrilled. So, but uh, what do you? What's your impression of that? Are you talking about like for the the pedestrian? Uh, bumps, yeah, where they like raise along, the pedestrian yeah. crosswalk, or sometimes they're just uh, speed bumps that are in you know not necessarily they they combine them sometimes with crosswalks, but sometimes like going up the poly, which is close to where I live, uh, there are some that are just there to slow down the traffic. Yeah, I, I mean, I off the top of my head, I don't have any um, you know stats on um, you know what we've seen before and after, uh, but they have installed those for what it's worth in areas uh, they're, they're not you know, I, I think of those ones that you know on the poly and i also think on on farrington you know and why not and, and not a coolie in those areas i don't know if there's one in not a coolie but for sure you know up up and down the, the leeward coast there um i mean those are areas where you know um they've been some of the worst areas for pedestrian fatalities um and, and just getting hit uh, uh, deeply unsafe places. So uh, it makes sense that they're there. Um, I, to be honest, so I'm not sure. I don't have anything that shows. Oh, and, and you know, I, I don't know what the the record has been before and after. But, um, we'll yeah. have to look at that. Uh, we were talking a little before about scooters, about Lime in particular, which dropped in here, parachuted in here with a hundred or more uh, of their uh, scooters, dropped them on corners with no. Uh, plans. It was a very bad reaction. And I think the city then to, said, you know, we're going to figure out what the regulations are. Uh, and, and you, mm -hmm. What's the status of that, you know? The status is that it's still ongoing. Um, they don't yet have an ordinance. And, you know, we're talking about, you, you can have personal uh, electric scooters, uh, right. but we're talking about something that would allow and enable um, companies, uh, you know, uh, to to rent, kind of like you'll see in these other cities where you know they'll just they'll, they'll be in in public areas, and you can just kind of pick them up and and zip around where you need to go. So, yeah, Lime did that with enormous fanfare and controversy, and uh, really ran afoul of the then administration very quickly. Uh, but yeah, and the, the the takeaway from that was, look, these aren't even. Um, you know, covered under the city's vehicular code, the state vehicular code, I think, you know, all the the state and and county level bureaucracy that, that goes into into regulating these. They're like, we haven't even done this yet. These guys just kind of popped in literally. And and so they're still playing catch up. It's my understand uh, my understanding. Uh, I think the state a couple of years ago created some sort of enabling legislation to allow the counties to then create their own programs. And uh, the city and county is still working on an ordinance that would cover rental companies. Um, there are a couple of, I wanna say smaller scale companies uh, that do operate uh, like, I think across, you know, even as far west as the airport, uh, but they are, they're supposed to, it's a gray area where they are supposed to um, stay and only, you know, only do business, quote unquote, on private property. Uh, so it's like, yeah, rent scooters, but, you know, just duck into one private parcel and leave it on another private parcel. And I, I don't know how, you know, yeah. how well they're able to stay off of like, you know, stay or keep them off of parks and, and sidewalks and, and things like that. So there there are some like low level, I think of the better term for it, but, but they're out right. there, but they're not, you know, the city is still working on getting something where you could have, uh, you know, scooters. And, and I know, you know, there's, there's mixed feelings, I think, still about, you know, you see just a scooter just, you know, plunk down in the middle of a sidewalk or, or something like that uh, but the if you have these things and they're properly regulated uh it's i think that the benefit that people would point to is you know again uh reducing or replacing car trips you know single car uh trips and and, and helping to, to curb some of the, the congestion that comes with all of that. So. I, I think uh, you're right that mostly the regulation will be around uh, 
people doing business, we're calling it scooter sharing or scooter rental, uh, whatever it's called. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, the city did set up a relationship with Biki. And although there are a couple of other small uh, enterprises that have tried off and on to uh, do shared bikes, uh, Biki's kind of the, the, mm -hmm. you know, the king of the hill. And whether it's yeah. one, two or three, scooter companies that are able to come in. I, I know there are scooter, very reputable uh, scooter companies that are operating on the mainland and Lime has gotten to be a much better uh, player, I believe as well, that they're all kind of waiting yeah. to see what the regulations say, because that will yeah. determine, uh, you know, what, what uh, we're able to do. So uh, the next question then is, you know, we're getting more scooters, more personal scooters. Someday there'll be more uh, shared scooters. Uh, we've got bicycles, we've got e-bikes, we've got people on various kinds of electric skateboards. Do you see some kind of a conflict coming between, uh, you know, we the, the bike lanes or the, the lanes that are there are, are small by comparison to uh, some places because we just don't have enough room to uh, make them bigger or they, we haven't been willing to commit the room to make them bigger. Do you, do you see a, a, a coming uh, conflict between various modes of, of uh, personal mobility? Potentially. I think, you know, it's it's growing pains just like anything. You see the protected lanes go in and, and you know, that was kind of, in a, in a sense, that was a conflict, right? That, that uh, people just had sure. to kind of get used to it. Um, and now, right, you're talking about different modes uh, in between there. Um, on the, so the, the, like take the King Street uh, protected lane. I'm, if if memory serves, I'm pretty sure I've got this right. You cannot have, you can have some presence of e-bikes. I think like low speed e-bikes are allowed on right. the protected lane, um, and of course regular bikes. And I that's that's what is sub, that is what is allowed. Anything else? Uh, so you almost inherently have a conflict if you're if you're on the the King Street you know, laying in your, your, your site pedaling, uh, or you're doing a low speed e-bike, see anything else fly past you. Uh, that's not a car, right. But is, is, you know, a motorized, uh, vehicle that that'll, you know, shoot past you a scooter, something like that. I think by, you know, just inherently there's a conflict there if they are currently not allowed, uh, and they're certainly not allowed on the sidewalk, but then that kind of, kind of gets to your point. Well, where, what do we do? That means you, you know, how are we going to accommodate uh, all these modes? Um, mm -hmm. And and you know the the ongoing tension of taking uh, space from motorists, right? Who who are used to having the, the the street. There's a lot of controversy when the you know they they gave up a I think it was a, a full lane on King Street. And motorists were really worried about, uh, you know, how much, how that was going to impact their, their travel times. I think the city went to great lengths to show, oh, actually, you're not seeing a huge impact on the travel times, uh, despite that. But again, it's just kind of this transition, and it's like a slow uh, ship to turn around, right? It's 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 turning a, a big ocean liner around. Uh, it's kind of the metaphor, I think, where where yeah it might you might be taking you might be talking about uh, taking more street space from motorists um and this idea of you know complete streets and sharing the road and, and all that and, and motorists might obviously be concerned hey we're getting less and less space but as you slowly try and get as many people as you can on these other alternative micro mobility uh type of, of vehicles uh, or or modes of travel um and I, the idea, right, is to have fewer cars to compete with in the end. If you're having more right. people in these different modes, taking up less space and requiring less parking. Uh, but, I, yeah, I think there is an inherent tension and there's growing pains, right, as you try and, and make that transition, yeah. incentivize people. Uh, for sure, not everybody is is, is happy about that, right, and, and wants to... Right wants to go along with that and, and that you know of, of course or it's, it's i've even heard uh, then, yeah. i've even heard traditional cyclists uh what i sometimes call the the uh spandex and clip shoe crowd yeah, yeah. 
uh, sure, who sure. are, uh, you know, they, they say, well, you know, we fought for so many years uh, we yeah. lobbied to get these protected bike lanes. Mm -hmm. And now we're, you know, contending with electric bikes that are going, as yeah. you say, go whizzing by, even uh, even faster ones. That, and you know, there's a sort of a there's a little bit of a purist uh, mentality yeah. among right. people who are doing all the sweating uh, against people who are just mildly perspiring <laughs> because they're yeah, on, right. on an electric bike. So if we've right, got right. A, a ways to go in in this mm -hmm. regard, um, sure. Beyond that, we've talked a little bit about infrastructure. We've talked about some regulation. What what do you what do we need to do here? What, how can we move in the in the right direction? You think? Um, well, that's a good question. You know, you mentioned Beaky before, and you know, Beaky certainly. Uh, you know, first came the some of those protected lanes, um, and and there was a lot of chagrin from a lot of motorists and, and people in the communities. I mean, look at this what's the point of giving up this space and how many people are really going to use this this lane is this the best use kind of like what you're seeing with with rail right now with with the really limited um you know initial ridership on this very limited stretch right what's the and and but what happened then was was Vicky came uh I want to say several I think the first protected lane opened in 2014 then Beaky came I want to say 2017 and then you start seeing uh, a pretty decent use, right, with all the the daily rides that they uh, they continue to have even post pandemic. Uh, but then you start seeing, okay, we've got a, a system, right? So I you kind of look at at Beak, as you mentioned, kind of they're the the big uh, the, the kings of the hill right now. And so you know, I, I think they're they're looking at, and this is still some years out. But electrifying or offering, you know, electric bikes, even potentially offering electric scooters, if that can fit wow. in their their mission, if they can expand to that. And I just, yeah, I'd point to them as as kind of the tip of the spear since they they do so many rides. I think they're still at about twenty five hundred rides a day, um, and that's all micro mobility rides, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if if you can get them humming but again that's again it's a, it's a few years out that goes back to my, my first uh comments which is it always you know it's it, it shows a lot of promise but it always just feels a little <laughs> on the other side of the hill so to speak yeah i'm always bugging todd either in person or on the phone or on this program occasionally when he agrees to come on about going electrifying uh getting electric bikes because to me that will that is the uh that that is the the big deal changer i think yeah uh, you see them in san francisco you see them in new york uh obviously if you're downtown and you want to go to a meeting in waikiki you don't want to arrive there you know sweaty sweaty and, yeah and, right you know heavy breathing if you could right. do an electric bike uh you could uh i think i think it would open things up tremendously but as he points out it first of all it's not cheap it's uh, yeah. another big commitment, and they're they're not a uh, like any other transportation system. They they don't make any. They they need support other than what they get from, from their customers. Right, uh, right. So it would take a big infusion of cash. And but there is this huge, I think, potential of uh, electric bikes, electric scooters, uh, on street charging for electric cars, which would make you know could all be somehow. <laughs> uh combined into mm -hmm. uh uh and, you know i used to work for the electric company so i'm kind of aware of the cost of the infrastructure right. to get uh you know get enough power uh we were all the hawaiian electric has, has installed a number of fast chargers which are big uh they look like a little like a refrigerator and they take a lot of power and you have mm -hmm. to rewire a neighborhood so there there's a, mm -hmm. a confluence of interest i think in getting uh more electricity into uh, all the transportation for the sake of, of climate and getting more bikes and, and scooters out there for the sake of trans of, of congestion, which is probably yeah. more, you know, more interesting to people. So right. we're quickly running out of time. I appreciate you, your comments. Any, anything else, uh, any other observations you want to make about, I know you've written about specifics, excuse me, uh, specific cases along Wileye and so forth where they need to uh, improve uh, the infrastructure. 
Um, you know, as we say, it's taking a long time, lifetime employment for transportation riders. Uh, is, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anything else you can see in the future in your crystal ball? Oh, man. Um, I, you know, before the show, to be honest, I was hoping to uh, see where we're at in terms of uh, bike infrastructure, bike routes, that kind of a thing. But mm. really, uh, and I know, that micro, again, micromobility, you're generally talking shorter rides, but I'm really interested in how to better connect. Um, you know, you look at, uh, you know, like rail stopping at Halava, and then it's like, well, what do you do at that point, right? And that's always been kind of the case. So where the Pearl Harbor bike path stops at that same general uh, area, Right. What do you do? Where do you go? I mean, it, it could be such a gem if there was more connectivity. So allowing uh, for, uh, you know, more options to do these smaller rides all the way across the island. I'm thinking that I'm wondering whether uh, the city and I don't know off the top of my head state, you know, they're looking at um, uh, from off of Fort Weaver when you go around Westlock there to connect to the Pearl Hyde. There's like a path right there. It just needs to be updated. Yeah. Uh, there are long-term plans, yeah. but as you say, it takes, and the, the Pearl Harbor bike path is a, has to be, you know, cleaned up fairly yeah. frequently because of uh, what some of the stuff that goes on yeah. there. But That's a whole think, other show. Again, if there were more people <laughs> using it, it would make a big difference. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to look for, for expansion out to the west side, maybe mm -hmm. get, a, a, get a little out beyond uh, Waikiki and into uh, East Honolulu. That would, that would all be great. Marcel, I want to thank you so much. It's been very interesting. I'm going to ask you to come back some uh, time when we talk a little bit more about this and about our progress in this. But I really appreciate sure, your, your, uh, your point of view and keep on, keep on covering uh, it because it's, it's a story, do. I think. And, and with that, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Uh, we're going to have a micro-mobility moment. I try to end most of these shows with a, uh, a micro-mobility moment. So um, here it is. Um, it, we, we've got a lot, as we've discussed, uh, go on to that next slide. We've got a lot of, uh, of stuff happening. And it's, it is going to take us all uh, kind of getting, working together in a sense, uh, getting along with each other and, and, and in these interactions for the infrastructure and so forth. Uh, next slide. Um, so these are, are just a few samples of, of what's out there. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, E-skateboards, we had folks from the, the One Wheel group were on the, the last show. Uh, electric bikes are getting more and more diverse. They're getting more and more interesting. Uh, Mark Twain once said, get a bike, you'll enjoy it. If you live, and uh, that kind, uh, Albert Einstein famously uh, said, "Life is like like learning to ride a bicycle." And we'll go on, and we'll close on this. Uh, uh, this is all talk about uh, from Deloitte about insights into looking into uh, what's going on there, uh, and uh, basically, it is this necessity to increase the infrastructure, increase the understanding, increase the cooperation. And finally, on this, I hope humorous note, uh, Albert Einstein and the dog who doesn't chase people on bicycles, I will say thank you for watching. Uh, enjoy, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay in touch. We'll be back in a couple of weeks again to our guest, Marcel. Uh, thank you so much, and, and keep on civil beating because it's a very important part of our, of our, civic, uh, our civic life here. Uh, without it, I don't know where we'd be. So thank you again. Aloha to all, to both of my regular viewers, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for watching ThinkTech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.